Hello, welcome to another instructional video from EGIS Associates. Today we're going to be talking about some editing basics. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at what is a feature template and how we use that within the editing process. Feature templates can be found both in ArcGIS Pro as well as in the traditional ArcMap application. And we're going to use those uh, when we're creating new features. But before we do that, we really need to understand what a feature template is. So a feature template is something that we access that allows us to create a new feature because it defines all of those properties that we need to create that new feature. So those properties include things like the target layer. What layer is the new feature being created on? What symbology is used to create that new feature? What default attribute values do we want to assign to the new features we create? And what default construction tool do we want to use when we're trying to create the new feature? All of those properties are defined as part of the feature template. So where do we find these feature templates? Where do we go to access them? Well, it, it depends on whether we're in ArcMap or whether we're in ArcGIS Pro. If we're in ArcMap, we're going to go to the Create Features window. And as you can see here in the slide, you have all of the feature templates available there to create new manholes, new parcels, property lines, street center lines. If you're in ArcGIS Pro, you're going to go to the Create Features pane. And again, you'll see there the various feature templates that are available to create new features, uh, new building updates to the city limits, new lakes, um, parcels, power poles, sewer lines, uh, creeks and streams, and so on. And we'll demonstrate this here in just a moment so you can see where to go exactly to get to the Create Features window and or the Create Features pane. So where do these feature templates come from? How are they created? Well, if we're in ArcMap, when you start an edit session for the first time in your map document, it's automatically going to look at all of the editable layers that you have available, and it's going to generate feature templates for each of those editable layers. After that, if you add a new layer during the middle of an edit session, you're going to have to manually create that. Also, if you go to change symbology, say you go from single symbol symbology to some sort of categorical type symbology, then you're also going to have to manually create the feature template to match to the new symbology. In Arc Pro, it's a lot easier because it's all done automatically. Uh, as you add new layers, the templates are automatically created. If you change the symbology, the templates are automatically created. So it's a lot easier inside of Arc Pro than it is in Arc Map. Now, as you're going to edit, there may be times where you don't see the feature templates you're looking for. Uh, and there's a couple of things to remember with this, in that feature templates are linked back to your table of contents or your contents paid, basically those layers that are in the map you're working in, so that if a layer is not visible, so if you've turned it off so you can't see it in the map, it's also going to turn off the associated feature template. They don't want you adding new features into layers you can't see, right? Because then you can't verify it's in the right location, it's snapped properly, and so on. So it makes sense that if you can't see the layer, you wouldn't be able to create a new feature in the layer. So that's one reason you might not see the feature template. Also, if the layer is not editable, so maybe it's coming from a different uh, data source, such as an AutoCAD file or... Uh, or a DGN file. Uh, those are non editable data types. And because you can't edit it, you would not have a feature template for it. If you're working in uh, ArcGIS Pro, you actually have the ability to set which layers are editable in the contents pane. So if you have set a layer so it's not editable, you will also not see a feature template for it. Again, that makes sense because you can't edit it, and adding a new feature is editing the layer. So if it's not editable, you can't add new features, therefore you don't see a feature template, right? Also, if you've added a layer in ArcMap after you've already started a uh, edit session, you won't see a feature template. You'll have to manually create it, 
at that point or potentially stop editing and start editing. So those are just a few reasons you, you won't see a feature template. At the top of the Create Features pane or the Create Features window, if there are templates that are not visible, you'll see a warning up at the top that says click here to see templates not listed. Well, if you click on that, it will show you the templates that aren't uh, being shown and it will also tell you why you can't see those templates. So let's jump into a demo now and take a look at some of this both in Arc Map and in Arc Pro. Okay, so we're going to start here in Arc Map. So we're in a traditional map. You can see we have manhole layers, property line layers, sewer line, there's some street center lines, parcels, uh, and then a, a base map. So to access the feature templates inside of Arc Map, first thing we have to do is start our edit session. So I'm going to go up here and click on the editor toolbar and start editing. So this, for those that haven't necessarily edited in Arc Map, this starts the edit session that basically allows the software to begin editing the data you see here in the map view. Now that I've started my edit session, I can go over here on the same toolbar and click the Create Features button. This opens the Create Features window. And here you can see the various feature templates. So I have one for the manholes, one for the parcels, the property lines, and the sewer lines. Notice that the names of the layers match to what you see in your table of contents over here. Notice the symbology for the template matches the symbology shown also in the table of contents. And then here's that warning I was telling you about that says click here to see templates not listed. So if I click on it, it opens the feature templates window and you can see that the street center lines and the different, see there's three symbols here, city, county, and highway, that those three feature templates are not visible, right? And then down here in the explanation, it says the layer associated with these feature templates is not visible. So that's telling me the layer is not turned on. So I can close that. And if I turn that layer on, that warning goes away. And now you can see those feature templates. Now, if I select a feature template, I can right click on it here and go to properties and you can see all the properties associated with the feature template. There's the name I can put in a description. I can put in tags or keywords. So this is a very simple map. Some maps may have 10 layers, 20 layers, 100 layers. So if you're trying to search for a specific template to use in editing, when you have a lot of them in there, you know, these tags are those keywords you can use in the search box up here at the top of the Create Features window. Our default construction tool, right? And then these are the attributes coming from the database for the layer. And I can go in and define, you know, some um, defaults so that when I create a new feature, it takes those values. So. For example, the condition, if I'm only putting in new manholes, uh, these are brand new construction, I can go ahead and click and say they're all going to be good, right? So now anytime I add a new manhole in there, it's going to inherit that good condition. Okay? And you can see that I'm just click here and I'm just going to click arbitrarily and put in a manhole. And if I open the attributes for that manhole, see here, See, there's the condition good. It inherited that from the feature template. So that's what we're talking about when it defines all of the properties for creating new features. It's on the manhole layer and it's got these default attribute values. So you can see um, this is where we're accessing the feature templates here in Arc Map. Now, if I come in and I change a layer, say the sewer lines here, and I change the symbology for it, and I'm going to go change it from single symbol to categorical based off of, say, the pipe material. And all those values, I'm going to update the color ramp and go OK. So now we've changed the symbology over here. And if I want a feature templates that matches the symbology so that when I go construct a new sewer line, and it's cast iron, I can just click on the cast iron template and it inherits that value. Well, I need to create those feature templates. So to create those, 
I can go up here where it says organize templates at the top of the create features window, go new template, select the proper layer that I'm trying to create it on, not manhole, but we're trying to do sewer lines. Click next, choose which feature templates I want to. Well, these are going to be new sewer lines. Uh, they should not be any new wooden lines going in. Uh, steel is not typically associated with sewers, so we'll turn that off. Should not be installing any more clay. Uh, and polyethylene, also not something typically associated with sewers, so we're going to turn that off and go finish. And so now you can see it's created the new feature templates that I wanted. So cast iron PVC and ductile iron. I can now close the organize window. And now I have these. Uh, and since I don't want people entering just generic sewer lines, I'm going to go ahead and remove the just generic sewer line. So now if they want to create a new sewer line, it has to be one of, of these. So if we can put in a new PVC, sewer line we come in say it starts at this manhole and goes out to here and there we have it and again if we open the attributes you can see that there's the material pvc already picked up and then i'd come in and start putting in you know my other attributes it's a 10 inch line and oh there's conditions go ahead and make it good because it's a new line so we'd fill in those attributes and then of course uh, once we filled in those, we would come back over here and save our edits. I'm not going to save my edits because this is just for demonstration. But you get the idea of how these work in ArcMap. Now let's take a, a moment and look at it next in Arc Pro. Okay, so now you can see we're in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, we've got a basic map open here with several layers, light poles, power poles, city limits, buildings, and parcels. So to access the feature templates in Arc Pro, the first thing we do is go up here to the Edit tab in the ribbon. And then we're going to click on the Create button here, which opens the Create Features pane. So again, you see the Create Features pane over here on the uh, right side of the interface. And again, click here to see Templates Not Listed. That's the uh, same or very similar warning that we saw in ArcMap. If I click it, you can see these are all the templates that are not being displayed. And if we expand those, it'll tell us why, um, why we don't see the template, right? So in this case, the layer is marked as not editable and the layer is not visible. So this would be the light poles. And if you go over here to the contents pane, you'll see that light poles are not visible. They're not turned on. And then if I go over here to the, the button that looks like a pencil, this is list by editing. You can see it's not marked as an editable layer. Matter of fact, the only layer that's listed as editable right now is parcels. And if we go back to the Create Features pane and look back, you can see the only template we see is the parcels template. So as we go back and we start turning on or making other layers editable, you'll see new feature templates appearing over here in the Create Features pane. Now you notice I've set light poles and power poles to be editable, but uh, the templates did not appear. And that's because they're still not visible. Once I make them visible, now those templates appear over here in the Create Features pane. In each one of these, uh, again, I've got properties. So if I click on the template, I have it selected. I can click on the blue arrow here. And this takes me into the properties of, of this. To some extent, I can see the uh, fields that are available. I can see the construction tools. If I right click on the template name, I can get further into the properties. So this actually opens the template properties window. And I can put in the description, the tags, just like we could in ArcMap. This is where I can assign not only the default tool, which is highlighted by the little radial button here, but what tools the user can actually use to create the new feature. Okay, so in this case, because it's a building, we don't want people freehanding buildings in. Buildings tend to, to be a little bit more structured than that. So we've disabled those tools. The only tools that people can use are the autocomplete. So a building that's next to another building like we have in an urban area. The right angle tool, because buildings often are constructed with well, what's supposed to be right angles, not always the case. Uh, trace some other existing features, and you see that these are just the tools that we have allowed 
the user to, to use. And it's simply by checking these boxes. So if I want to make the some of these other tools non-available, we'll just check those boxes and those tools will not be available. And you'll see that change up here. And then if I go down to attributes, this is where I'm going to go in and not just a, a, I can assign the you know, default value in there, but I can also highlight it as a required field. So if I say estimated height is one of the required fields, when I click OK here, <clears throat> when I go back to those templates here in the Create Features window, you can see now when I go to um, create a new feature, I need to put in the values for those fields. And now when I go to create that new apartment, and notice this only applies to the apartment when I put those in, it'll assign those values to it, right? So if I say it's going to be a, a four story uh, building and the estimated height on those is say uh, 48 feet. So now if I go in and I say draw a new building, say in this parcel here, You know, however, I'm um, okay. Quickly drawing, you can see that it's labeled by the way that the uh, 48 is the estimated height, so it inherited that. And if I open the attribute attribute pane here, you can see that it inherited the number of floors and the estimated height from the value I put in here. And of course, because the, these are not set as default values, we can change those every time we go in and update. Um, or want to draw a new building based on the information we have available to us. The other nice thing with Arc Pro is that if I do come in and I add a new layer, so go in here through my catalog pane and say add in. Okay, so say we go in and we add a new layer like the zoning layer. You can see that it automatically created a feature template for zoning. If we come in and we change the symbology for that layer, the show or indicate its zoning classification, and we're going to pick the zoning field. So notice it went ahead and added, you know, all the values in there. If I want to pick a different color ramp, I can do that. But notice it's automatically generating the feature templates over here as I'm making changes to the symbology. I don't have to manually go in and create those templates. It's automatically updating those for me, unlike in ArcMap, where we have to manually generate those. So from this perspective, Arc Pro is much easier to, to work with. So that's kind of the, the basics of working with feature templates and what you can do. So these are used to create new features uh, within various layers. And they really help us define all of those properties that we need to create those new features. So there you go. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of feature templates, how they work in both ArcMap and in ArcGIS Pro, and really understand the, the purpose within the editing process. So if we can ever help you really consume the power of place to make use of your GIS technologies, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. We provide a wealth of services from enterprise implementation, systems integration, strategic planning and needs assessments, rent -a tech services, training support, and, and so on. Feel free to contact us at www.egisassociates.com. Uh, give us a call at 678-710-9710 or drop us an email at info at egisassociates.com. If you did find this video useful, please give us a, a thumbs up. If you'd like to be notified when we release new videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And until next time, hope you all have a great one. Bye.